Welcome one and all to Diamond City. I am your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn and here we are with a home plate settlement build. Now when you enter Diamond City, if you go to the elevator and go up to Mayor McDonough's office, you can talk with Geneva who will sell you the keys for home plate. Now home plate is a player home here that you can purchase in Diamond City and here's the front door. Now there's also another door to uh, home plate right over here this blue door and incidentally if you don't enter and exit through this door at least once then home plate won't appear on your mini map as a place that you can fast travel to now um one of the interesting things about home plate is it is right in the middle of diamond city's marketplace which comes with all of these wonderful crafting station he stations here's an armor bench here's a weapon workbench here is a chems lab right here a chemistry station, and then here's a cooking station. Now, um, what's frustrating is that in the vanilla game, each of these uh, workshop stations acts as an independent workshop. So if you were to transfer items to it, you wouldn't see anything in here at all. It would be empty. But the, uh, an excellent modder has come up with a great mod, which I link to in the description of this video, that connects all of the different crafting stations out here in the marketplace with the workshop that's on the inside of Home Plate, your player home. Which means that you can now use all of these crafting stations out here just as you would with any crafting station that you were to place in a settlement or your player home and all of your resources are connected. That way you don't have to drag things out of your workbench outside to use these resources and you don't have to build these inside your home. They're just outside the door. That's the only way that I found this settlement to be truly useful. So outside I placed this XO1 suit of power armor and I used a mod to paint this Minuteman paint job. You see that it has the Minuteman logo on it. Um, I linked to the mod in the description of this video. I love the Minuteman. I stand for the Minuteman. And so I wanted to support them uh, with my X01 suit. So uh, here I am in the middle of Diamond City claiming my stake as the general of the Minuteman. Here's my home, home plate, and here's my suit of power armor. Nobody had better touch it. All right, let's go ahead and enter home plate. And let's enter this back door first. So here we are on the inside. This brings you to the uh, this rear door of the facility, and uh, it's a it's a pretty cramped house. Now let me tell you one thing really quick before I go through the grand tour, which won't be that long. Um, this settlement has a lot of restrictions. Let's pop open the workshop, and you'll see that you can only build a small assortment of things. Let's try going to structures. And the only structure item category available is wood. Let's go into wood and all you can do are miscellaneous things like wood pallets. And I, the only reason I have these is because I have a mod install that gives me these. The vanilla version of the game, even with all of the expansions, does not allow you to build any structures on the inside, which means you can't build walls, which is just heartbreaking and annoying and frustrating. You also can't build any... Uh, resources. You see the resources tab is completely missing. So no crops, no water, and no scavenging stations. That's a bummer to me, somebody who has a bunch of scavenging stations installed that add a bit of diversity to the way your workshop works. So it's extremely limited. Basically all you can do is furniture and decorations. Um, and that's not really compelling to me. I just didn't want to have to deal with that kind of, of gameplay. And another thing is that the workshop that comes with this player home you can't assign a supply route to it. So this workshop can never connect with any of the other workshops, which means if you want to build anything in here, you have to put it all in your inventory and manually drag it to this workbench. What a nightmare, right? Absolutely horrible. Now there is a mod that I link to in the description of this video that allows you to link this workshop up with all of your other ones and assign settlers to do supply routes to it. It also allows you to uh, send companions to your home plate because in the vanilla game you can't. You cannot send companions here. You cannot send settlers here. This is just you. Just you and only you. The only way you can get a companion in here is if that companion is with you and you happen to visit it while the companion is there. So lots of limitations with this player home, which honestly does not make it a very viable player home. Like, why would you ever use this player home when you can't build structures 
it, the workshop doesn't connect with all of your other workshops. You don't have access to all of the resources you've saved in all of the other settlements throughout your gameplay. It's just incredibly annoying. So without mods, this is not a feasible settlement. It's really also only useful for somebody who doesn't work a lot with settlements, like if you're playing a playthrough where you don't visit any of the other settlements and you never join the Minutemen and all you want is a player home and this is really the only place you will ever go, then it does make sense. Especially if you install the mod that I talked about earlier that connects all of the crafting stations out in the marketplace to the workshop in there. If you have that installed and you never visit any settlements and this is literally the only place you will ever go to retire, then yes, this is a viable place. So uh, that explains why I haven't built my home plate until now. But I built it, and so let me show it off to you. One of the reasons I was inspired to build this home plate is because I found a mod that allows me to install curtains. Since I can't build structures inside home plate, and I didn't want to install the mod that opens up structures inside home plate, there is a mod that does that, and I link to it in the description of this video, but I didn't want to install that mod. I kind of wanted to have as close to a vanilla experience as I could, so instead... <laughs> <laughs> I downloaded a mod, which completely overwrites that vanilla experience, but it allowed me to build these curtains, and the curtains allowed me to kind of segment off portions of this home to make it look a little different. So let me show you this bathroom. I used these bathroom curtains to create a little bathroom nook here. So over here, I, I installed a new mod that uh, allows you to put sinks, and uh, there, there are a bunch of great bathroom crafting doodads. Almost everything in this bathroom comes from a mod. In fact, I think absolutely everything does, because uh, the vanilla game, even with every downloadable content, it just doesn't have anything for bathrooms. You can build dilapidated toilets and dilapidated bathtubs, and that's it. There are no decorations, there are no showers, there's no soap. Absolutely everything here comes from a mod. And, you know, you have to have a bathroom because you're a human being. So, uh, all of this comes from mods, but I link to all of those mods in the document that I link to in the description of this video. And uh, it's really great. It, you can put toothpaste up there and a Braxo cleaner and towels. And here I've got a shower here. And uh, I also wanted to have a bath because my player character is a female. And females like taking baths. I know, my wife likes taking baths. So, she, she's got a big bathtub, and I put the shower uh, drain right there over the bathtub drain so that they work together. I didn't feel like putting a shower curtain here because I've got this larger curtain kind of cornering off this entire bathroom. So there you go. Uh, one tiny little bathroom for your player or for uh, visitors. And another thing for visitors is I've got this sort of loungy station over here. So I imagine this as, you know, when the general of the Minutemen has... Uh, uh, people come over for chats, you know, companions come over to have a good time or uh, to have a conversation. They can come out here to the lounge and they can sit down in these nice, comfy little lounge chairs and read their magazines and smoke their cigarettes and read their books. And then I've got a TV over here that is actually a functional TV. You can load a holotape into it and it will start playing. Look, here is the new Band-Aid plastic strip with new Super Stick. It sticks better than any other band. -aid. But we'll turn it off for now because we don't, you know, want that speaking over us the entire time. So a nice little lounge area over here. And then here I've got a bar, right? I put this little bar down and I covered it with a cooler and then some beer and then this neato little light, which uh, came with the vanilla game, but I never really found a use for it. But I thought it looked great there. And over here, this is the working displays mod. These actually are just uh, little containers that you can open up and fill with uh, drinks and then once you fill it with drinks the um, there you open it up and you can fill it with all sorts of drinks and once you fill it with drinks it generates a visual so uh, everything in there is real those are my real resources and they're really showing up on the shelf then I've got a little wet bar over here that this is a, a fixed wet bar I installed a mod that fixes the wet bar I have that linked in the document linked in the description of this video then an ice bucket some bear Bob Rob's best moonshine and some uh, glasses over there and then of course some crates with some drinks down here so a little bar for entertaining people and then a corner nook for entertaining guests who decide to come over now up on these walls here I've got an assortment of magazine covers from popular magazines or uh, popular posters and uh, you know there's this heightened area with these mitch, uh, mismatched different pieces of painted plywood and I couldn't really think of a use for it 
So I just decorated it up with some uh, interesting pinups. And then over here I have some just sort of loungy decorations. I've got a filled bookshelf with uh, a reskin of the books on the bookshelf. These are all from real books. Here's a magazine filled with all of the magazines I've collected over the, over the long haul. And uh, then over here, this is like my trophy area. This is a trophy of all of the outfits of all of the people I've defeated. Father, a little tinge of sadness there. Um, Maxim's battle coat. And then of course, Kellogg. So I've got their trophies standing there beneath the Minuteman flag, just sort of rubbing it in. Yeah, that's right, we are the Minutemen. Over here is another trophy section. These are all the bobbleheads I've collected on this nice little rack. I did have to manually place each of these there. This is not a functional display or anything. So that took some time, but it was worth it. Fun to put together. And then over here, I've got a chase lounge and uh, a nice filled bookshelf with drinks and model robots and books. And then a stack of books over here and another glass of scotch. And I imagine this is just a nice reading nook. You can come sit down on the chase and read a book next to the Minuteman flag. All right, so as you can see, I have this is the this is the public entertainment area with the bar and the public seating. This is where you can have company over. They can use the restroom, they can drink, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now onto the private area, and I decided to uh, to make this private with some of these uh, curtains, these lovely curtains that came with the mod that I linked to. And uh, upon entering, we see that this is a part of an armory, right? So I've got all of these weapons from just playing the game and they're important and they're big and they're huge but uh, I never have a use for them because I'm specced into Gauss rifles and so I put them on display here. So I've got Final Judgment from Maxon, I've got the Broadsider from the Quest, I've got the Junk Jet from just the quest. And then here inside here, I've got uh, two legendary items, the big boy and the party starter. I had them. I bought them a long time ago. I never used them, so I figured I'd put them on display. And then uh, over here, you know, I've just got some, some I've got the cryo later there, and then I've just got some Gauss rifles and um, um, rail ri railway rifles over there. Uh, I figured I'd have a steamer trunk. Nothing is really in it, but it looks nice. And then the outfits that are important to me. I'm the general of the Minuteman, so there's a model with my general outfit on in case I ever need to put it on. And then, of course, I am the Silver Shroud. And so I've got my Silver Shroud costume here on a mannequin, along with my Silver Shroud gun and some Silver Shroud calling cards, uh, ready and waiting for when I need to take up the hat and the submachine gun and prowl the streets of Boston, defending all that is just and right. Over here, I've got a dilapidated uh, power armor frame, and I figure I've got my power armor stationed outside by the power armor station, but I'm also a tinkerer, and so I've got a power armor frame in here, and I've just been tinkering with it. I've got a blowtorch and an oil can and then some red paint. You know, I've been painting up the doodads in there, so uh, sort of like a little armory slash workshop station. And then over here is the rest of the workshop. I've got a filled shelf filled with paint and scrap and components and ammunition. Here's the workshop, nothing much to Done there another filled shelf and then here's a working washer and dryer you can actually put dirty clothes in the washer and clean clothes clean versions of the clothing will come out of course it only works with dirty clothes uh, but um, it does actually work you know I figure I'm gonna have to launder my belongings so I've got this here and then I've got this nice short filled shelf with all sorts of clothing and then some chemicals uh, on the wall there now, as you can see, I've got this section uh, cornered off with another curtain. And let's go and check it out. And look, it's a kitchen slash eatings area. So uh, I've got a, a stove over here. And I've always just really liked this cooking stove. I didn't want to use a mod that gave you a, a brand new, fresh looking cooking stove. I, I like this rusty looking one. So I stuck that in the corner. I've got uh, filled shelves with all sorts of boxed food and silverware and kitchen utensils, produce and purified water. And then and I've got a, a dishwashing sink over here for uh, cleaning the dishes and uh, a towel for drying the hands. Here's an ice cooler that came with the mod. This works just like Buddy, the robot from that quest. You can put Nuka Cola and Vim in here and after 12 to 24 hours it'll come out ice cold which improves its stats. And then I've got a little breakfast table for eating my lonely breakfasts when I'm here alone at home plate. A bowl for cereal, some fancy lad snack cakes, a sweet roll and some coffee. 
Now, of course, the way I play the game, I, my my actual player home is at Kingsport Lighthouse. I did an entire video on what that looks like, but uh, I did want to build this out just because it's here and I wanted to make it look nice. So I'm pretending if I ever did use this, you know, I could, I could eat my breakfasts there. Um, and then here's a filled refrigerator with Nuka-Cola and water and all sorts of goodies. You can even see produce down there, which comes from a mod, again, which I link in the document linked in the description of this video. Uh, now, here's this door, and I'll show you where this comes out to. Right here, so you've got two doors to your home. The red door goes into my kitchen area. The blue door goes into my living area. You can see now why I wanted to enter this one first. And this blue door is the one that you have to actually enter in order to officially discover home plate so that you can fast travel to it on your Pip-Boy. And we're not done yet. We've still got more to show off. So uh, there's these stairs leading up and you can see these pink heart curtains. Um, now, I wouldn't normally use curtains like that, but the mod I installed actually had a very limited uh, choice of curtains. I think there's one more curtain after this and it was the uh, it was the rockets from that uh, the, the blue rockets from Sean's room, but I'm a female player so I figure well She's gonna like the heart curtain So you go on upstairs and here's my Spartan bed I have just have a bed in the corner uh, with some simple art on the walls and a, a, a Table next to my bed so I can read my books. I've got it. I got uh, some privacy curtains up here and, and then some bookshelves I filled this bookshelf this sort of bureau uh, with all sorts of uh, personal effects and doodads and then another dresser over here so it's got some curtains for a little bit of privacy and then you come on up here to my smoking area I've got <laughs> revolutionary art on the wall this nice easy chair there's nothing here there's no computer there's no television there's no distractions I have a chair and a cigar with maybe some books. She sits here just to decompress after a long day of being the general and killing raiders. She sits in her chair, she smokes her lit cigar, she maybe reads a comic or a book, and, and there, there you go. Uh, so I love this little uh, upper loft area. You can just do almost anything you want with it, but I actually really loved this just rusty looking walls. I mean, look how nasty and rusty they are. They're unlike the rest of the walls of this facility. We've got cement walls down here and sort of corrugated metal cement walls down here. I mean, this is all nice. I like it, but I just really love the abs. I mean, even these walls are not completely rusted. You can still see some good metal in there, but you go on up and these walls are completely rusted. I love the way it looks and I didn't want to ruin it by putting just too much art up anywhere. So I left all of the walls blank except for that I put that nice little revolutionary poster up there uh, and then put I put down a rug put down a chair and a cigar and there you go so there's my little relaxation nook I even have a stack of cigars there and a lighter man I would love to hang out here I just really would <laughs> and then uh, this is this is actually a really cool player home there's a ladder that takes you upstairs it takes you outside the player home to this uh, inside of this trailer uh, and then you can walk out onto the roof of Diamond City. Well, it looks like it's a little foggy out today. Whew, man, that's some thick fog. And you've got a chair here and a grill here that doesn't work. Uh, and a doghouse that you can't actually put a dog in. And a bathtub that you can't take a bath in. So, uh, this is purely just for decoration. It's also not part of your house. So you can't build anything here. The workshop doesn't work here. It's just another entry and exit point. But it's kind of cool. So there you go. That is my home plate. Uh, you know, I don't have huge piles of power armor. I don't have, uh, you know, just, it's not too extravagant. I wanted it to feel lived in. I wanted it to feel useful. I wanted it to feel like it could not only entertain like a real house, but that it was also a private place for the sole survivor to come and just decompress. Now I have a little bit of bonus content for you. Hold on one second. Here we are in Diamond City again, but I am on a completely different character. This is my Brotherhood of Steel character, whom I've never shown off on any of my settlement builds before. But, um, I'll show him to you now. As you can see, I made him look as much like me as possible. 
This guy sided with the Brotherhood of Steel, unlike my main character who sided with the Minutemen and the Railroad. And uh, with this character, I didn't want to have anything to do with the with the mail, with the Minutemen. So I didn't get any single settle settlement. I never met Preston Garvey at Concord. I never did any quests to help settlers. And so the only place where I even have a workshop is here at Diamond City, here at Home Place. This is my only place to call home. Let me briefly show you what I've done. So with this character, I built out his home plate long before I started using some of my major mods. As you can see, I've got an assortment of uh, all sorts of stuff on the wall up here. Uh, so I did the same thing here that I did at the other place, only I'm using a variety of different ones. And that's because I just really can't think of what to do with this. You've got this nice uh, vaulted area, but it's so short that, you know, I figured you'd just put some photos up there. Like at my uh, my primary home plate, this home plate has a, a smoking and drinking section over here, a nice lounge. Uh, and then I've, I, I'm only level 50 with this particular character. So I haven't got all the magazines yet and I haven't even put in all the lighting. Uh, this is a, it's just very utilitarian. I've got a corner for storage. I store all my weapons there. I store all of my grenades there. I store miscellaneous things there. And there's where I store all of, all of my uh, armor. Coming on over here, I've got a Brotherhood of Steel flag, of course, because this character sided with the Brotherhood of Steel, and uh, an assortment of power armor. I tried at the time to kind of lighten it up. This is long before uh, Wasteland Workshop, so I didn't have access to the spotlights when I built this particular settlement. Uh, so I tried to lighten things up with these tiny little lamps, but um, you know they didn't do a very good job, so I put down some regular light bulbs. And uh, I'm just showing off my power armor here. It's pretty utilitarian. I just got it all on display. Uh, and then my primary suit, which is uh, just outside, is uh, what I actually live and work in. Moving on up, this is exactly as it looked when I got it. I didn't do anything to it. Moving on up, I did absolutely nothing to it. So not a completely fleshed out build, but it gives you a little bit of an idea of what this looked like before you got it and uh, what you might be able to do without mods. So there you go. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this inspired you with your own home plate. I know that there are very few layout choices available with this uh, particular player homes, but I'd love to see your player homes. I'd love to hear what you would have done, di uh, done differently. Please leave a comment below and please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Your subscriptions make this whole thing possible. The more subscribers I get, the more awesome content I can produce. So if you like what you see, please subscribe for more. Thank you so much for viewing. Thanks so much for subscribing and I'll see you soon.